What's happening, Hot huh? Wheelers? Joe Motor here. Welcome back to the Motorhood. Today I've got a parade of loose vintage pieces I want to show you guys. I've got um, several pieces that have been piling up here and I need to put them in the display case, so I thought I'd give them a little camera time before we do that. Some of these cars um, came from different sources, but the, this, these first few cars I'm going to show you came from a storeroom, uh, so they are part of my collection as a kid. This one included this, this Predator here from... 1984 or so I think it was released in this metal flake green color with the sort of lightning bolt design across the hood and top really interesting casting I think it's based on the the Porsche 928 model but it's really sort of heavy and chunky and uh, pretty standard metal uh, casting details you can sort of see the rear here has uh, taillights indented there and the gas cap uh, door there this car obviously has the ultra hot wheels, which um, are characterized by the, the sort of solid chrome wheel uh, with these sort of sidelines coming in towards that center circle there. And the ultra hots were uh, very similar to the, the hot ones. I'll show you this car in a second, but the hot ones, of course, were these type of wheels here on the right. They were um, uh, most often gold, but both of the hot ones and the ultra hots had really excellent rollability and uh, functioning suspension so you can usually take those original ultra hots and hot ones and and feel that bouncy suspension on those cars and then of course they roll really smoothly so uh, Hot Wheels sort of perfected the art of the rolling 164 die cast car but um, the ultra hots continued that uh, legacy in this wheel variation so it's a really nice uh, chunky all-metal car also notable is the all blacked out uh, windshield all the way around so it's hard to know if there's a interior inside of this I have to take it apart to know for sure some of you guys may have taken one apart to know so you can let us know in the comments but I think one of the interesting details on this piece is the headlights have a really nice etched pattern in them if you can see right there which gives it some nice texture so really nice piece there glad it's still in decent condition definitely played with but uh, uh, still pretty much intact there there you see the predator uh, can't remember how many other variations I think there's another uh, casting called the night streaker it was very similar to this one maybe in purple or something but uh, lots of different Porsches obviously in the Hot Wheels line this next one I uh, just kind of showed a peek of the Camaro Z28 tons of variations of this car throughout Hot Wheels history I think this one came out in 1986 or so but I just love the the vintage graphics I'm really a sucker for that especially if they kind of point to racing or uh, you know those retro 80s graphics nice red color again with all the all blacked out uh, windshield and hard to tell what's inside there so it's just all blacked out very simple but these are the hot ones wheels and they're gold of course and then you can also sense the suspension on on these as well if you push down on them and they roll like a dream that one rolled way out of the camera there but uh, this one like I said lots of different uh, variations of this car lots of different colors but just that sort of classic Z28 front end it'll focus there we go nice grill and detail work there on the headlights the hood sort of looks like it opens but it doesn't it's just sort of a casting detail there and then this one is a Malaysia base so there's the Z28, pretty cool. Uh, next piece here will be the uh, Ferrari Testarossa. Nice sports car. Of course, all of us who grew up in the 80s, the uh, Ferrari and the Lamborghini were the sort of desirable sports cars of the time. But again, with the ultra hot wheels here, it's a larger wheel in the back than in the front, like the previous two cars we looked at. And then there is suspension on this one as well, even though it sits low to the ground. But really nice sculpted details here on the side of the Testarossa, which are characteristic of this car, for sure. And then that beautiful Ferrari logo, nice and crisp on the hood there, still very much intact. I think I probably took good care of this car because it was so nice. But there's a couple of variations of this. Here's all, the all red metal base there, you can sort of see. This is the common release uh, that you can find a few different variations of this one. Uh, one of the remarkable things about this casting is the interior because it's a two-tone if you can see down in there the black and red interior which is very nice really nice treatment inside there with uh, the black and red interior 
lots of nice detail really makes this car nice now if you find it with the tan interior I think that one's a little more rare variation but there's also a ton of other colorways of this car too uh, so you could fill up a display case just with the Ferraris that's for sure looks really good alright so the next one is gonna be another Porsche this is the P911 so it's different I think than the there's another casting referred to as the Porsche 911, but this is the sort of original Hot Wheels Porsche casting, which is just referred to as the P911 or 911. The number 95 here, one of the first releases of that back in, uh, uh, I guess, 1982 or so. Really enjoyed finding this one because it's got the vintage racing graphics on the side, that red and yellow and uh, white graphics with the arrow sort of tampos here really nice and this is a pretty common find a lot of vintage stores and, and toy shows I go to this piece is, turns up quite often so I don't think this is especially rare but again with the gold hot ones you have a little bit of suspension on it rolls really smoothly and just got that uh, nice little curvature of the sort of vintage classic vintage Porsche there which hard to beat in black and I'll show you the base really quick so really nice uh, piece you can find this you know million different variations of this particular casting uh, none of which I think are particularly rare but I could be wrong about that I just seem to see a lot of them when I go to to shows and stuff but it was nice to find that in the bag this piece I was really excited to see turn up in the pile of cars uh, this one I knew I had it in the collection when I was a kid but I remember thinking I lost it and so I tried to track it down and nearly bought it uh, a couple of different times but I'm glad I didn't because it was really fun to see this turn up. This is the, the Blazer 4x4, which came in a lot of different variations. But this one was pretty special because it came in a, a dinosaur mud pit set. And I think they discontinued it at some point. Um, I think it came out in 1988 and then they sort of unexpectedly uh, quit making it. So this particular variation became kind of desirable for a while uh, with collectors. But there's a lot of different other variations of the, of the Blazer. But this one in particular is really unique, and I can't remember if I actually had the mud set is what's confusing me, because I don't remember playing with the mud set or anything, but I do remember this casting. So I'm not sure where, where this came from uh, when I got it, but uh, the color on this is really great. It's sort of a, a matte army green, utility green here with the yellow tampos and the yellow interior. So it's a nice color contrast, and the doors open on the 4x4 here, all of the variations of the the Blazer 4x4 have these opening doors, which is really cool. There's always a nice added element as a kid to have these opening features. And uh, and then the interior is, is pretty nice. But I don't really mind the yellow glass here, just because I think it accents the, the color contrast of the whole vehicle, uh, including the shocks. The yellow goes down into the shocks, so they made good use of the color all the way through there. And then the, uh, the off-road wheels here, take a look at the base. So uh, really excited to find that piece. Really enjoy the old 4x4 castings. Look at all that textural detail in the grill there that's got the winch and the headlight detail. Really excited to find this piece in good condition and uh, keep that one in the collection there. So the last one I'm going to show you here from the, the pile of cars that came out of the, the storage unit is this one here, which is in pretty decent condition. This is a crack up and it's the pickup truck, but I, I don't know exactly what proper name this one has in terms of the casting in fact the Tomart's price guide I can't find it anywhere in there but uh, so I'm not sure what the official name of this casting is but it, it is sort of a camper truck x15 on the side here and I love the vintage graphics with the black hole tires and again with all the blacked out uh, windshield there uh, the base here shows a Hong Kong base there was another variation of this truck in kind of a maroonish color but um, you know, I'm not sure if it's based on a, a Chevy, maybe. Um, you guys will have to let me know in the comments because I just didn't have time to, to research it enough. But back here is, of course, just says truck. And then the great thing about the crack ups is that once you crashed them, they looked like they had a little fender bender there. And they were based on this sort of metal piece that rotated uh, and rotated quick enough to where it just looked like you, you crashed it. So anytime you hit it, you got this really great. Uh, effect and it was they were really well built because you could put it back together and it would look just like it did pre-accident so 
also what was interesting about it is if you took off the camper there was details inside a little shovel and axe and stuff in there so they even put those details in and most of the time these crack ups are hard to find in good condition and this camper is usually removed so you find a lot of them beat up and without the camper and of course this camper could use a good cleaning but I was stunned to find this in decent condition with the uh, the camper still intact but uh, speaking of crack ups I did purchase a different one online recently uh, this one here which I think is called the front ender and it's based on the Buick Regal or Buick Stalker but I don't see it listed really in the variations of the Buick Stalker Hong Kong base 1984 I think is on the base so you know these came out in the mid 80s but I can't seem to find them officially listed in the the, the price guide or whatever but I didn't do that much research so uh, but the 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 stock car variation of this is really fantastic I love the retro graphics and the sponsor badges on the side are just uh, these sort of abstract shapes they don't actually have any sponsor names on them but you still have kind of the checkered uh, net there in the driver's side the all blacked out windshield as we've seen in these other models we've been looking at black wall wheels and uh, just really beautiful graphics and like I said these are really hard to find in mint condition because these were meant to be uh, crashed so you can sort of see on this one I picked up there's one little bite here on the front but that's where you would smash it let's see if I can get it to smash yeah there we go really cool effect this was really kind of a brilliant uh, engineering very simple but just very effective in the way that uh, the playability of these things as a kid and you just really had a uh, uh, really more authentic way to play with these cars especially race cars and things that would normally get crashed but the best thing about them is that you could reset them and it was like the crash never happened so really love this stalker version and I'm pretty sure it's based off the Buick stalker with the modified front for the for the effect there but um, if you guys know the official name of that casting you can let me know in the comments Another piece here that I added to the collection, not technically a vintage piece, but the treatment of this casting certainly allows it to join the vintage party here. This is the custom Datsun 240Z. I think it was released in a uh, series called the Throwback Series, which may be a Target exclusive series. I'm not totally sure about that, but uh, just love the graphics on this piece. Really simple and well executed. You know, just the use of black and white and the two color uh, stripes on top of this turquoise color which is not really my favorite color but uh, on this car it seems to work really really well and then of course the black wall wheels I just love it when they bring back the black walls uh, the only bad thing is that it has a plastic base so it's not quite a premium you know sort of vintage metal feel to it but there are a lot of vintage castings that had plastic bases and as a display piece it looks it looks pretty rad so even though this wasn't made in the 80s it certainly looks like it could have been and uh, it's going to join the ranks here of some of these other vintage castings. All right, so let's move on, and I'll show you really quick a Matchbox piece. I picked this one up at a vintage toy show that I went to recently and uh, just couldn't leave without it. It's just such a unique piece. I've seen it online a few times. I think this was released in 1978. This is from the super fast uh, series of Matchbox cars when they were still made in England. If you look here on the base, you can see the super fast logo and uh, the lessening products uh, copyright there made in England on the base so uh, a lot of the matchbox vintage pieces are really collectible and and some of the the racing pieces are really unique this Ford Escort here the RS 2000 with the shell logo and the Dunlop CB uh, text on the side here these are actually stickers they're not tampos I don't know if you can see that or not the interior is especially interesting. It's got tan interior with very nice texture and molding on the seats. And of course the driver's side there on the opposite side you would expect. But the seats and uh, color of the interior are really, really nice and classy. The grill's got really nice characteristic texture and detail there on the double headlights. And a little license plate there. And then around the back it actually has a tow hitch which is kind of interesting. It's uh, made from the same material as the interior, so it's got that same tan color. Not sure why this uh, rally car would need a tow hitch, but uh, it's probably just native to that Ford Escort casting. And uh, really enjoy that piece and was happy to find it. 
getting back to some Hot Wheels here with a couple of Toyota MR2s which were released uh, in the early 90s, around 91 or so. Lots of different variations on these two cars and they're not especially hard to find or rare or anything but I love these two variations here, uh, the sort of rally style graphics. And these also have the ultra hot wheels but they are not the same. They don't qu quite have the same suspension as you would expect on the earlier all metal castings with the ultra hot wheels and the rollability is nice but it's just not the same as uh, the 80s releases with the ultra hot wheels but they still look pretty cool and uh, both of them have sort of a black plastic base here as you can see I think both of them are Malaysia bases and uh, really enjoy the the sort of side-by-side -side variations the one here with Europe and Asia 34 and then the Toyota MR2 with the Toyota logo up on top there. Looks like both of them have the red interior. Let's see if we can look down inside there. We'll see a little bit of detail anyway. Um, but really enjoy the graphics on these. The spoilers on the back, really cool. The one variation that I think is a little more rare if you find the MR2, this variation here with black headlights. Here they're chrome. But if you find them with black, I guess they're a continuation of the base, so they may be a separate piece. I think that's a little bit more rare version than this one here. Speaking of rally cars though, let's continue with that uh, thought and look at these uh, Peugeot rally cars. These are really, really cool pieces that I've been looking to add for a while. Peugeot Rally 205, and I think I put this one in the collection earlier. I may have shown this in a previous video, I don't know for sure. but. Uh, I love these two cars. They're really big and chunky, and I think they were intended for international release before they came to the States. But they have this great moving part in the back, this opening hatch, which allows you to look down into the engine bay, which is in the back, of course. So you get lots of nice little detail there in the molding of the interior, which shows you some engine detail. Uh, even a little crank back here. But uh, all metal casting, metal body, metal base, and even the hatch itself, I think, is metal. So kind of rare to get all of that in one. And the black wall wheels, of course, are a favorite. But I love the sort of just variation in graphics here. The number three, the red and blue, the Pirelli and Champion logos on the side. Take a look at the base just real quick. That's a Malaysia base. I think these were the only two variations of, of these, except for one more that was released, I think, in the late 90s, which uh, was a completely different colorway. But just really interesting casting. Very strange uh, way to do this casting, and um, really excited to have these in the collection. Here's the shell version, Michelin shell logos, number two on the side with a little rainbow on the side as well. And again, the same details in the hatch. But man, I really love these two pieces and uh, kind of getting into the rally style of cars lately. So these are really, really cool additions. Another really cool casting that I think is really interesting um, is the, the Flat Out 442. And I've shown this one quite a few times on my channel, uh, but I recently picked this one up, which is the flat orange uh, variation. There's quite a few different variations of the Flat Out 442, and there's some little interesting details about them as well, because they range between black wall and hot ones. So here's the yellow one back here I think I've shown before with the gold hot ones wheels, and again, suspension, really nice rollability. On the black wall one, you don't get the suspension. It rolls pretty nice, but just not quite as smooth. I also have the gold variation here, and you'll notice that the two uh, in the back here do not have this little uh, little pentagon thing here on the side. It just looks like a blue blob right here, but it's actually a little sort of Chrysler pentagon shape, uh, which is pretty interesting. And if you find this casting without the pentagon on the orange, I think it's actually the more rare version. Uh, WTFFOR did a, did a video on this and kind of talked about different 442s. I just think this is one of the more unique castings Hot Wheels ever released. It's just a big chunky casting with a lot of interesting detail, including the, the tail lights that are part of the base, the uh, rear window, which is part of the interior, that uh, spoiler, which is part of the body, and then just the way it sits on the base, you kind of see through there. Uh, just has a really interesting stance. And the pipes that come down the side and the um, this, this sort of scoopy side here, sculptural detail on the side of the car. You look down inside and it's very, very basic. Just a very basic steering wheel and got a seat belt on the 
the bucket seat there, but otherwise very plain. But look at the floor. You've got that sort of steel bolts that you can see there on the floor, and then I think that might just be a fire extinguisher. Really interesting details on the floor of that, even though it's a very basic interior. I mean, look at this. So the base and the, and the interior and the body all blend together here in the front. So you can see the base coming through in the headlights. The interior comes through in the scoop on top and then the grill. And then that blends is framed by the body itself. I just think that's really, really smart engineering for back then. And uh, it makes for an incredibly unique car. And of course, I love the graphics and uh, color of this piece. So I, I'm really on the hunt for all of these, but uh, you know, it'll take me a while to get them all. I think there's a green one that is extremely rare and hard to find. Uh, this blue one here actually came under a different name. It was called the 442 Much. I don't know why they changed the casting names because it's basically the exact same casting, but this one came out in a later release of um, Hot Ones. So uh, it's kind of like the throwbacks. They re-released this car later as a kind of a a tip of the hat to the old casting but if you look at the 442 much it's got the same kind of little details down in the base uh, I'm sorry in the interior really interesting casting and I really love tracking these down uh, but this is the the most recent one I've added to the collection is this orange one here another piece I found here which I think is really unique is this uh, called the highway heat it's based on a sort of mid 80s Dodge Daytona sort of hatchback release and uh, there's another version of this casting called the Turbo Heater, which was released earlier, I think, in like 1984. But the Highway Heat came out somewhere like 1986, and uh, this is the only variation or colorway of the Highway Heat version of the casting. And it's in this just really sunny orange graphics here with yellow and red accents. I love that sort of arrow going down the center with the explosion there on the hood. And the yellow interior gives, gives it even more of a sort of citrusy look there and there's nice detail down in there of course the yellow glass and um, the graphics around the side with the gold hot ones wheels so this is just a hot little car right here but there's some added detail here that I think make this casting even more special if you look under the hood which opens up really nicely quite a few textural details in the engine there which uh, you know they didn't have to go to the effort of doing that but it looks like it's part of the body and there's a lot of different varying texture in there for the engine detail. And coming down into the headlight there, it's just kind of a nice touch to be able to open that up and see that detail there. And then the other great detail about this car is the taillights. I absolutely love the, the textural detail on the headlights there that just sort of looks like a, a ripple effect. And the uh, dual uh, tailpipes there that come out underneath, again, just really, really nice finishing touches on this casting. I don't know if the turbo heater has the same detail on the rear, I'd have to look it up, but I'm guessing it does. But just really love those taillights, they're especially unique to this car, and uh, the graphics and color of this piece are just wild. Take a look at the base real quick, just so you have an idea there, it's a Malaysia base. Doesn't say the name of, of the car on the base. A lot of them didn't. Some of them really just don't uh, say the name of the casting on the base, so you kind of have to look that stuff up. But really love this orange casting and can't wait to put it in the case. All right, so every so often I'll add another piece to the real rider part of my collection, and this is the latest acquisition right here. This is the Super Scraper from around 1983 or so, and it's based, of course, on the classic Bywayman truck uh, released from Hot Wheels with the added. Uh, plow accessory on the front here and so sometimes these are hard to find with the plow intact this one is still pretty well attached here and in pretty good condition this one has gray hubs uh, gray wheels you can I think you can also find it with white hubs uh, a lot of the real riders come in white and gray hub variations you just kind of have to track them down to see which one is which but love these pieces this one has a red interior and a red bed and some of the byway men castings have variations in the bed itself but really enjoy the sunroof on this one nice clear glass you can see down into the interior doesn't seem to be a steering wheel in this piece but uh, really enjoy this black paint with the uh, yellow orange and red retro graphics on the side another just classic Hot Wheels treatment here and uh, 
these are the off-road real rider tires as opposed to the slicks which come on some of the other real rider releases and I just love the Goodyear lettering on these this can't go wrong with the real rider releases from Hot Wheels I think this is a Malaysia base yep and they released this uh, version of the Byway Man with with uh, a plow on the front three different ways and they called it something different each time so this one is the Super Scraper from 1983 and black and then they released what uh, they called the Power Plower which is the only other version I have and I've shown this before but the Power Plower is a red uh, paint with blue interior and bed and it has really nice graphics on the side. It says Brian's removal, snow and dirt removal here on the side. And this one has white hubs, so you can sort of see uh, that variation here. It makes the Goodyear really pop off of those tires. But uh, they both have the sort of orange plow in the front, so you can sort of see the similarities there between the, uh, the Brian's removal power plower and the Henry's hauling super scraper. But the third release that I do not have is the Pavement Pounder, which came in green, and it actually has a, um, a yellow plow and a black interior. So I don't have that variation, but I'm certainly on my list. Uh, but you just can't go wrong with these Real Rider trucks from the 80s. They are classic Hot Wheels pieces and always looking to add a few more to the collection. On a side note, while I have your attention here on the uh, Power Plower here that has the Brian's removal tampa on the side, the snow and dirt removal. You can also see the little uh, stumpy uh, smiley face there on the side which is a funny little detail. But uh, recently I saw on eBay a variation of this piece in orange and I'm not sure where it came from. I'm showing you a picture of it right now. But it's interesting because you can see the red version uh, there and then next to it is the orange version and the orange version is not listed as an official variation to my knowledge So I don't know if this was in an employee collection or if it was a prototype or some unique variation uh, That was not released so you guys will have to tell me if you know anything about that uh, But I thought I would mention it while I had your attention here on these trucks All right, so we're gonna finish up here today and take a look at three different uh, versions of the Baja Bruiser casting was really excited to add three different versions uh, to the collection here and this orange one that you're looking at in front is probably the oldest car we're looking at here today this one was released about 1974 so the Baja Bruiser might be an underrated casting because it goes way back into Hot Wheels history um, and this orange one here is probably the only version of this I can ever afford because I think there's a, a green one and a yellow one that are extremely rare and hard to find and very expensive but this orange version here with the patriotic graphics on the side, the number five, uh, Baja text and some sponsor badges here on the side, the red line tires, and that um, metal massive engine peeking out of the hood there, along with the uh, some really nice casting details, including the KC light here on the top of the roll cage, and some tools, spare tire, a couple of gas tanks, and some riveted details on the, the metal casting here in the bed. It's got a plastic black interior, and uh, back here in the back, the word Mattel, which is casted into it, uh, along with the tail lights sort of etched in there. Uh, the one that makes this unique is that it's a metal base, so if you take a look at the metal base really quick, you can see the Baja Bruiser text there with the Hong Kong base. 1973 is actually on the base, but uh, this is a beautiful version of this, really enjoy um, all the detail on this. The front end there is probably modeled after like an old Ford F-Series truck, I'm guessing. Also really love that drop V right there in the center of the grill. And if you look really close, you can see the number 8 right there in the center of that V. A little subliminal message there about the V8 engine here up top. And uh, those circle headlights, which um, also kind of look like the, the Hightail hauler or the, uh, the good old pick -em up truck. So really beautiful version of this casting. I'm glad the orange one is the easier one to find because I really enjoy the orange version of the casting. The other versions here are this white one, uh, which is basically the same. It's got a blue interior and all the casting details are the same. Got the tools in the back of the bed and um, love the, the flame graphics here. The yellow six inside the red and blue flames, the pinstriping down the side. Really nice color contrast there on this white color then some other sponsor badges 
Uh, and then around to the back, you can see the Mattel also etched into the back or casted into the back of there. The only difference with this casting is that we have a plastic base, and that base uh, continues up and makes up the grill. So the grill and headlights are also plastic, and it's that real shiny mirrored plastic, so it's kind of hard to see. But still a very beautiful example of, of the Baja Bruiser in the vintage style and straight up black wall tires really beautiful and, and then here's the blue version which is equally as cool and I what I love about this casting is that all three are racing livery but they're all different uh, different decos uh, this one here has got the word American across the front fender and Baja Bruiser across the rear fender and love this diagonal graphic of the 7-Eleven there and the other tampos there including Goodyear this one's just got the straight up black wall tires as well and if you find this with uh, the red line tires, I think it's the rarer version. And then this one has a black interior and similar details as we've looked at on the other pieces. But again, with the uh, plastic base here, as you can see, I just love the three of these together uh, as racing livery, but each one of them being different. They did release a couple of Baja Bruisers recently. One was in the RLC Real Riders, I think, released. This one here, which is uh, the only one I've had in my collection, and I just love this piece. Got really uh, thick rubber Real Rider off-road tires with Goodyear lettering, and it's actually got a red line around the deep dish, which is a nice touch. Really shiny and beautiful. The Tampa work, of course, is top-notch on the RLC releases with the Spectre Flame blue paint and nice racing graphics and flamage along the side, which I think is, you know, true to the tradition of the Baja Bruiser having the, the racing graphics on it. But the uh, additional metal details, they're still there, and plastic black interior, but the, the hood is really beautiful with that flame kind of fade accent there down to the Hot Wheels logo on the front, and then the headlights along with that KC light up top are painted white. Just beautiful detail there. Very nice treatment to the Baja Bruiser. Right around the back too, some beautiful Tampa work here. Again with the Mattel lettering uh, casted into the metal body. Red painted tail lights and some beautiful detail there across the top in those three stickers. I really think this is an underrated casting and I've shown it before in uh, other videos so I apologize if it's repetitive but I just enjoy the continued variation of different uh, racing livery on the Baja Bruiser and uh, they've released a few other variations like a pink dinner car and uh, a Neo Classics release which I don't have so maybe one of these days I'll track down the, the uh, yellow or green variation of this one but uh, until then these will have to fill up the display case and they're quite handsome additions so excited to add those and i really appreciate you guys watching the video and continuing to check out the videos if you just subscribed welcome to the motorhood and if you've been subscribed for a while thank you so much for uh, continuing to hang out here um, got more videos planned so i hope you'll stick around keep on motoring we'll see you guys next time